This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier. My co-host this week, Stu Miniman, to three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next guest, Michael Dell, welcome back to the Cube. Thank you. Super excited to be with you and obviously super excited about the formation of Dell Technologies. Here we are in the middle of Silicon Valley and what this uh, part of the country has done to change the culture of the entire, the world's economy in the last 20 years, 25 years, is nothing short of incredible. What problem are we trying to solve? Why do these industries work? How can you take all this great technology and actually help a non-technology industry improve and go digital? So that's that nexus of technology and business. That's where we sit, that's what we do, is bring those two things together. So you've served eight, eight presidents, six of whom had a great sense of humor. Um, <laughs> why is it important for leaders to have a sense of humor? Well, I think, I think a sense of humor reflects balance. It reflects a, a, a perspective on the world that is healthy. Being a leader and being right a lot means that you get to the right answer, regardless of whose idea it was at the beginning, and regardless of how many times you change your mind along the way. Great leaders change their minds when they get new information. We have extraordinary vision and leadership of Mark Fields, and, and so much of this starts at the top, and he truly believes that Ford is perfectly poised right now to help people make their lives better. And we think we can do that through mobility. So we are breaking out of uh, our comfort zone. What makes kind of where we are now in technology so important? Yeah, I, th I think I think one. I'm very excited about the open, right? The ability for everyone to participate um, has has created such a. It's almost a much more rapid innovation cycle than we've ever seen before. You know, some of the brightest brains in the world are involved in the creation of new technology. I just think they need to be focusing a bit more of that intellectual rigor towards the impact they're having on society and how they could do it better. Because I think it's too much of a technocratic solution, right? Technologists say, we can do this. The question is, should they? Back to the point about innovation in cloud is, yes, it's, it's lower cost. Uh, it's better economically. Uh, yes, it's simpler. But it also drives more innovation at the same time. And it's really the combination of all these factors that do the trick. You know, we made it more inclusive than most of the companies would do because typically IPOs are more elitist events where like a few execs show up and so on. And uh, we worked really hard to say, look, with the more the merrier. We're going to talk about the human condition and, and what's happening in the world and how to affect change. So, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, your background and you know, some of the challenges that you had to overcome. Coming out of that experience and the struggle against apartheid um, has, been, has been foundational for me in terms of looking at um, how terrible our world can be and how amazing our world can be and the people who take the time and the commitment to change the terrible into good. Freedom of speech is not something theoretical, it's not something academic, it's not a great idea that the forefathers came up with. It's something that lives and breathes in my blood and in my DNA and in my, in my dreams and in everything that makes me human. And so it's, I hate it when people say, oh, you're an adrenaline junkie, you like to go to war. I don't like to go to war. I like to go to places where those values are being tested. Um, young ladies always ask me, did you have a problem being a black woman in engineering? And I always tell them that um, I don't have a problem with being a black woman, and if other people do, then that's their problem. I totally embrace it. Ten-year anniversary from the first information on demand, the first that's data right. conference. Yep. So here we are now, ten years later. This morning, I uh, recapped a bunch of the promises that we made at the start of that, and I had no idea all the progress we would make. I mean, we not only kept those promises, but along the way we introduced new capabilities like Watson, Watson Analytics, uh, and uh, yeah. you know, reinvigorated the whole market around artificial intelligence. 